Hi guys, welcome to Little Wicket Railway. I'm Rob and in this video we're creating resistor wheel sets. Resistor wheel sets are used where you detect trains using block occupancy current sensors. Block occupancy current sensors are sensors that can tell if a train is in an isolated block by measuring if a current is being drawn by something in that block. This is an example from Merg, the model electronic railway group that works with DCC layouts. A digital locomotive will draw a small current even if it's not moving. So when I put it on the track, a current flows, the sensor activates and the LED comes on. This is extremely useful if you plan on using automation tools like the ones in JMRI that need to be able to track the location of trains accurately. But there's a problem. Once the locomotive leaves the first block and moves onto the second block, then the first block is shown to be free again. But you could potentially have another six feet of coaches or wagons behind that loco that are still occupying that block. Most coaches and wagons don't draw a current. Some do if they've got lighting, for example, that's powered by the track, but most don't. So the block could be full of rolling stock, but the block occupancy current sensors will show the block as clear. There are workarounds for this. You can put a delay, for example, on when the block shows as empty, which in theory gives the train time to fully clear the block. But what if a coupling fails and the back half of the train is left behind in the block? The front half of the train moves away, the sensor thinks the block is empty, and the next train that comes along slams into the coaches that were left behind. So ideally, we need a way for the current sensors to detect rolling stock as well as locomotives, and we can do this by adding resistors between the wheels that let just enough current flow to activate the sensor. And this is what's known as a resistor wheel set. We could do this for every axle on every piece of rolling stock and be super safe, but that's probably overkill. And as a minimum, it'd be good to have this on the last coach or wagon in the rake. This way, the block won't show as clear until the last part of the train has left the block. With that in mind, let's go and add some resistors to the wheels on this brake van. So I'm gonna show you the method I use, and like most things, it's not the only way of doing things, but it's a method I've been playing around with and it seems to work. And what I like about this method is that you can hardly notice the resistors when they're fitted, it doesn't require any soldering, and it can be reversed pretty easily and cleanly if you wanted to take them off for some reason. I'm using this Hornby British Rail 20 ton brake van and we're gonna fit resistors to both axles. And it's far easier to do this if you remove the wheels first. So these just pop out and I'm gonna use a blob of blue tack just to hold these in place on the mat. So that's one. And there's the other one. And we'll put this over to the side so it doesn't get damaged. On this wagon, the axle is plastic and so are the centers of each wheel. Uh, let me show you on here and it's only the tires that are metal on this model. So what we're gonna do is get some resistors and I'm using these. So these are known as SMD 1206 resistors. So SMD stands for surface mounted device and you'll notice that these don't have the long, long wire legs like um, the resistors you might be more familiar with. So these are tiny little rectangular things. And the 1206 bit refers to the dimensions of the resistor itself, meaning it's 0.12 inches long and 0.06 inches wide. Or in metric, that's 3.2 millimeters by 1.6 millimeters. So as you can see, these are really tiny, but you can go even smaller if you're working in smaller gauges. These resistors are able to handle a quarter of a watt, which should be enough for most layouts. And these ones are 5,100 ohms. But you might need to experiment with resistor values to see which values allow enough current flow on your layout to cause the sensor to be activated. Remember, I'm fitting one resistor to each axle. So that's an effective resistance for the wagon overall of 5,100 divided by two, so 2,550. And assuming the voltage on the layout is between 15 and 20 volts, using Ohm's law, this is gonna allow five to eight milliamps to flow. And this should be enough to activate a current sensor um, the figure of 10,000 ohms seems to be used a lot in forums um, and this just seemed too high for my detectors which obviously weren't sensitive enough to detect that 10,000 ohms. So you're going to need something to stick the resistor to the wheel set and for this I'm using ordinary super glue. So if I open this up I can balance this brush bit here 
and then if we pick up a resistor and you're going to need tweezers for this really because they're too fiddly to um, do by hand if we pick one out of here one's just pick, pinged out so if I pick that up and we want to turn it over and just to show you how tiny these are if I can grab it there we go I don't know whether you can see that is how small the resistor is so we're just going to dab a bit of super glue onto the back of it and then we're going to place that onto the axle just maneuver that into position there we go and we're just going to let that now stick into place and we'll do the uh, same with the other axle so oh, it's already popped out this resistor let's grab it with the tweezers give it another dab with the super glue and then again just pop it onto the axle and use the tweezers to maneuver that into pl into place there's a, bit, a little bit of a spur in the middle of that axle so let's bring it around a bit move it along into the center so these 1206 resistors are about the right size for double o gauge axles and once um once it's complete you, you will barely be able to notice them So we're going to let those dry it for a few minutes and the next thing we're going to need is some electric paint. So this is literally paint which when it dries will conduct electricity with relatively low resistance and this brand is um, from Bear Conductive and it's not the cheapest at around £12 per tube but a single tube will do quite a few wheel sets. You can pick this up off eBay and Amazon and I'll put affiliate links in the video description. And this stuff is water soluble. So if you do mess it up, or if you want to remove it in the future, then you can just wash it off with a bit of soap and water, which is good. It's not the easiest stuff to control when you squeeze it out of the tube. Even though the opening is pretty small, I find that it's useful to have a small paintbrush on hand just to make sure you get it into the right places. So this is the paintbrush I'm gonna be using. It's one of my smallest brushes and that will be able to manipulate it into the right areas and we're going to use the paint to connect the ends of the resistors to the inside metal edges of the tires and before we start painting it's a good idea to give the area you're going to paint onto a good clean especially the metal area so it, it makes a good contact so I'm going to grab a cotton bud here and just dip it in some isopropyl alcohol and we can just clean the inside edges of the wheels here and you might be thinking this is a fair amount of work for a couple of resistor wheel sets but what you would probably do is set this up as a, a bit of a production line um, and do a fair few at one time uh, probably makes a bit more sense so that isopropyl alcohol they, they weren't too dirty but that will just evaporate off now and you'll be left with a nice clean surface the other thing you can do if you really want to is just where you're going to connect the paint just rough up that edge slightly so that it's got something to key onto because it, it is a paint and you want a good connection i wonder if this one is going to be a bit tricky i don't know whether you can see there but the edge of the tire doesn't look very shiny so we'll soon find out but as I say the good thing with this is if it doesn't work first time you wash it off and you have another go and even removing the resistors once they've been super glued in place isn't too difficult I've had to do that when I was messing around with the different values that I needed 
we'll give that a go and see what happens. So they should be dry enough now. And let's open up the paint. And we'll start with this wheel set by covering. So this stuff, as you can see, it's already coming out the end there. We'll start by covering one end of the resistor and just drag it along the axle as far as possible. And then using the paintbrush, we're just gonna paint it along the axle. And it can be a bit hard to see because it's probably not coming up very well on camera, but the paint is obviously dark. The axle is obviously dark. So you just want to make sure that it goes all the way up onto the metal rim. And you don't want to paint it too thin. It's fairly gloopy stuff. My eyesight isn't fantastic, so I might just have to pop my head in the way of the camera to check on that. But you want to make sure you cover the full end of the resistor and then go all the way along the axle and up onto the metal part of the tire. And you can always go back and add more later. So let me have a quick close look at that. That's looking okay to me, I think. Once we're happy with one side, repeat the process on the other. So what we're doing is connecting the two sides of the metal wheel using this electric paint. We've got a nice big blob there. Try and guide it down a bit. Then again, we're gonna cover one side of the resistor, get it into the corner where the axle meets the side of the wheel and then just drag it up onto the metal rim there. Important that you don't let the paint obviously touch in the middle over the top of the resistor, otherwise you won't get very much resistance at all. So I think we're covered there. I've not done the neatest job on this one because I'm trying to work around the cameras. But that's one done, I think. So I'll pop that to one side and we'll crack on with number two. So another blob of paint. There we go. Cover that end of the resistor. and paint it up onto the side. So the edge of this one is much shinier, the metal bit. So I wonder if we'll have any problems with conductivity on that first set of wheels, but as I say, soon find out and we can always go back and have another go. So that's one side done. And then another blob on this side. Drag it onto the side of the resistor, down the axle, and up onto the rim of the wheel. And I'm rushing this a bit because it's on camera and I'm working around the camera. So not my neatest work, but I think you can see fairly easy to do. There we go. And now, we need to let it dry because if I'm to get my multimeter now, here we go, and put it on resistance mode. There we are, we're on 20,000 ohm resistance. I'll take my probes. So this paint will not start conducting until it has dried. So at some point, we should be able to see that resistance start to drop. There we go. So it's coming down. You can see on this first set of wheels, we have managed to make a connection because there is some resistance there. But until this paint dries, it's not gonna come down to the 5,100 ohm value that we're expecting. So we need to leave these for maybe 20 minutes, half an hour, and we'll come back and test the resistance then. So I took a quick break and watched Jenny Kirk's Monday Club and it's been about half an hour since I put the paint on. If we look at the resistance now, 
So we're down to 6,300 ohms on that one. And 6,480 ohms on that one. And that will continue to drop as it dries out. So we're probably at the point now where we can fit the wheels back onto the wagon, take them out and see whether we've done enough for this brake van to be detected by the block occupancy current sensors. So I'm back with the brake van. It's had a chance to fully dry now and let's put it on the track and see whether the sensor activates. So if we pop this on the track, the LED comes on and if we take it off, the LED goes off again. So there we go, a fairly easy way of adding resistance wheel sets to your rolling stock. And as I said, really useful if you plan on using the automation tools in JMRI because the block will never show as empty until the full train has left. And if you want to sell your rolling stock in future and you don't want to leave that on the axles, the paint will come off with a bit of soap and water and the resistors come off without too much trouble as well. That's it for this video. If you found it useful, then please give it a like and subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching and I will hopefully see you again soon.